Hello, my sweet creative friends. This is Meg. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> um, it's so good to be here. I apologize if I sound a little nasally at times. Um, after the last video, my family started dropping like flies. <laughs> Everybody was just one after the other, sick, sick, sick. Well, my 14-year-old didn't get sick, so... I'm happy about that, but everybody else, including myself, um, but I am getting better, just, um, you know, the, a virus, not serious COVID or anything, so I know when somebody says they're sick, that's the first thing people think of, but um, actually it was pretty quick, we're getting over it rather quickly, taking lots of vitamins and all that good stuff, so thank you so much to um, my ladies who made purchases from my last video, my little craft sale. Um, I just want to thank you so much for your support. There was five people who purchased. Um, I did only sell one journal, so thank you so much, Crystal, for purchasing a journal. I was very, I was like, darn, <laughs> I really thought they'd sell, but I am grateful to at least get rid of one of them. And a couple people were asking me about the France journal, like the pretty pink one. And yes, it is still there. So um, I did message you two of you back. I don't know if you got or not, but I'm just letting you know. But that is all you're going to hear um, from me about the the um, my sales pitch. I'm sorry. I just had to had to let you know because I do have a lot of new people here. So I want to welcome all my new subscribers and a special shout out to Donna over at Coloritaville. Coloritaville, I can never say that. <laughs> um, Donna runs a color tube channel. She's very awesome. I've been watching her for a long time since I think since she started, and um, yeah, so she's she's really great. I love colored coloring and color tube channels. They're awesome. You guys know I love Miss Anne. She has been an inspiration to me. She's just a sweet human being, a hilarious human being, and someone who was very encouraging to me um, when I was wanting to start my channel. And I just love her, and um, that's how I found out about Donna. And yeah, I really enjoy watching her color with markers. She's so good at it. So if you're interested in stuff like that, go check her out. But chances are you're here because of her. So hi. <laughs> uh, okay, so y'all know I ramble at the beginning, but I think that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, today I thought I would do something cool and share with you my favorite background techniques. Now, this is nothing new. I'm sure there's a million videos out there that show um, different techniques and things, but I want to show you my top 10. I'm calling it top 10, but that's because I'm grouping some of the things together, so it's probably more like 50, you know, but um, I promise you, if you stick around, you might be saying, for those of you who um, actually know about mixed media and things like that, you're probably like, okay, I know all there is, I know all the background techniques, but I think there's a couple here that I, that might be new to you. So chances are, if, if not, maybe it's interesting nonetheless. So I did prep a little bit so that we're not dragging <laughs> and dragging. I also had it, got a new light, just a little one here. Cause I just feel like it needs to be brightened up a bit. At least when I look through my screen, you guys always laugh at me for talking about that and say something in the comments like, your lighting is fine. But when I look through the screen, it looks really dark. So I always trip out, trip out about it. But the only reason I'm bringing it up this time, no, it's not to be annoying and always say that, is because I kind of want feedback. So my friends that always watch, um, you know who you are, let me know if it makes a difference or if it's too shadowy or um, if I should take it out or or if it's, you know, good the way it is, because I cannot really tell through the screen. So, um, yeah, anything, any feedback on that would be great. <laughs> um, so, thank you so much. So, I do have my messy background on, because we might make a little bit of a mess. That's why I have this one on here. Okay, so, um, mixed media backgrounds. You can do this in, uh, it's not just for canvases. You can do use the background techniques for canvases. You can use them in a junk journal. That's where I usually use them, although my... Um, examples today are actually going to be canvases. I have three examples, uh, uh, mixed media canvases to share with you, which I've shared before. They're my little example canvases, <laughs> um, for different techniques. So, so I hope that you will stick around with me and enjoy this. So let's talk about the first technique. The first one, and this is what inspired me to do this video is, you may remember this, this is where we are picking up. So I want to try to speed through this video so I can actually film a crafting video where we are going to pick up where we left off in our 
really cool mixed media journal that we are doing together. Um, so this is, for those of you who are new, this is a journal that I'm going to be working on and have been working on. We did the cover. Oh, they're starting to fall off. <laughs> the cover, the front, and the back, it's a Japanese-inspired, or um, it's a Japanese-inspired journal that I am doing. I was very inspired by Miss Robin McClendon and all of her work on her jelly plate, her journals, uh, everything that she does is just so inspiring. I'm using a lot of her digitals, and this is not for sale, so I'm using a lot of her stuff in it because you can't use her, her stuff and sell it. So this is just something I'm actually just making for myself and doing along with you when I can. Um, and all we've done so far is the cover, so I can't wait to actually play in the book. So it, you may notice something different. I thought that the cover needed something a little extra. It needed some fillers, and that's what I want to talk about first, is fillers for backgrounds. So, <laughs> excuse me, let me take a drink already, sorry. I'm telling you this cold. Okay, so what I used are these little tiny balls. <laughs> you can see them, they're called mini prills. And I'm talking about these little guys right here. P-R-I-L-L-S and they're just these little tiny balls and they come in different colors and they're different sizes some are a little bigger some are really tiny and they just go on so great with this glue I mean you can use it with anything any kind of paste which we're going to get into paste and things next gels paste glue my favorite glue to use it with is just this barely art glue this is my favorite white glue I know a lot of people love the um what is it called uh the Art Glitter Glue. Yeah, there it is. The Art Glitter Glue. I do have that, but I just really prefer the Barely Art Glue. I love it. Um, and as you can see, the precision that you get um, just with that line of glue, it just it worked so well. So anyways, I wanted to add some fillers. I was going to put little diamonds around here, and I thought that's kind of expected or something. Like I just feel like, oh, I could just, I don't know. It just didn't seem right. Excuse me. Man, I'm a mess. Um, but also, I didn't cut my spine fabric big enough. It's kind of glued up right there. Um, and it, like, you know, wide enough. And so I had this awkward little gap right here. And I just wanted to fill that up because then I had this, you know, very symmetric line from this piece of wallpaper here with the three circles. And there was just like a, a quarter inch gap that just looked awkward. And, um, yeah, so I, and I already glued it on, so it's like, what am I going to do? I need to fill that. So I got these guys out, and I think it looks really cool. I really, really enjoyed using them. I, they are very messy, but they're so fun. And when you see the results, you know, after you put it on, you're like, oh, my gosh, that's pretty cool. I think it's cool anyways. And you can see the lovely texture. Now, you can definitely paint over these, um, but you can use them just like this. And, yeah, there we go. So I just added them all in here to kind of, I, I added them in her little skirt, or her, excuse me, her kimono, the skirt of her kimono, the bottom portion, um, and the flowers. I also added it in the sun of her fan, if you can see that. Just little, little spaces like that. So that's what inspired me to show you this. And so let me just show you what these look like. I have a whole bunch of them, but I'm just going to show you a couple. So this is what they look like. These are the blue ones. And these little suckers are kind of pricey. But, and you only get this tiny amount, but you actually don't use that much. I mean, I used a ton. This is the color I use the most, and I've dipped into this jar quite quite a few times. And I still have over, half, you know, I have like almost three quarters of a jar left. And this is the um, Power Outage. It's like a blackish, silverish tint. And then, um, yeah, and then the other ones I used, I don't know the colors. They were like a red color. This one's called I'm Amazed. So they're beautiful. They come in all kinds of colors, and I have a whole bunch. You can get them over at Joggles, my favorite mixed media place in the world. Um, okay, and so if you also you can grab these. These are just just like those, but they come in different sizes, bigger ones. And these are um, a bit of a bargain, if you ask me, because they're around the same price as these little mini pearls, and around the same. And um, you get a big old jar of them. And this is by Finnebear. Um, the art ingredients and these are called mini stones and so or stone um, art stones and these are the mini ones you can see how tiny they are and then these are the medium sized ones and then they have the large art stones now I used these ones uh, the, the 
middle size in my forest journal, you might remember. I used them with some foliage and things on different art cards. I used, I like, to represent stones. And um, it just came out so cool. And they stick with glue, and you can paint them the same. So they're really great for adding texture. Um, so, yeah, so you can use stones. And just in that same category, you can also use things like... Um, if you can't get your hands on those, because those are not really sold in stores that like Michaels or uh, Hobby Lobby and things like that, that I know of anyways. But these things are, so these are a little more readily available if you like to shop, um, you know, physically go shopping. And these are just little specialty polyester glitters. So like these little, you know, round balls and, and um, these thick, chunky glitters. You can glue these on to a background and paint over them and get texture just as well. So things like that. Um, so the next thing would be, <clears throat> the most obvious would be texture paste. And I think that that, or the most well-known rather, not most obvious. And I only grabbed a handful. I have a whole drawer full of texture paste just because I love them so much. Um, and I use them so often. And so let me just show you a few different types of, of texture paste. And what we have here, the first one, I hope you can see these okay. Um, and I'll show you an example on a canvas in a minute. But this is pumice gel, and this is one that I don't see it that often people use, but it's the same as like a sand, uh, any kind of texture gel. As you can see, it's pumice colored, and I got this for a dollar, <laughs> but it's more expensive than that. Um, this was obviously a clearance. Um, when I was on vacation, I found it at an art store, and this is called Coarse Pumice Gel by Golden Artist, and I will show you what it looks like painted in a minute. We'll just swipe some paint over it so you can see that. The second one is this right here. This is another Finnebear. I love Finnebear products. Golden Nugget, and this is just a clear gel, but then on the inside, or, uh, you know, inside the gel, there's like little, um, golden glitters and black and stuff like that and it's just beautiful it's my new jam I love it um, and also you can let me just skip over another just bringing the mini pearls into it I tested this little little idea out I wanted to see what what these stuck in the best the pearls so I just had this right next to me and I swiped it on um, a piece of vinyl because that was also right next to me, or wallpaper, and um, just a scrap of wallpaper. And I swiped it on there, and I just dropped, I actually spilled a bunch of pearls in it. But see, if you can see this, I, I um, just dropped a bunch of the pearls inside of that golden nugget wax. Just to see when it dried up, I got some um, gesso on that one, but just to see when it dried up, if it stuck in there really well. And it did. These that would I would say gels are the best way to add the pearls, even more so than the glue. And the glue does a really good job, as you saw in the book. But I mean, it's not going anywhere with this stuff. It's not rubbing off. Like it's stuck for life. So, um, and so yeah. And then I was able to peel it off because I was gonna throw it away. And I was like, hmm, that's vinyl. So I peeled it off, and now I have these crazy looking, you know, gel slash prills pieces that I can use these in backgrounds if I wanted on a page in a journal and just paint over it if it looks a little too crazy. And I'll have that stone-like texture or, you know, just that, that texture that we're talking about. So, yeah, so really cool ideas. Um, I love working on things like, you know, those, those mats that things peel off of, I can't think, of, like rubbery mats, I just can't think of the word, silicone, there we go, silicone mats and things like that, because you can peel off paint, and you can peel off things like gels, and you can contain them like this, and glue them on later on. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, and then, so then the next one we have is a texture paste, that's going to be the hardest one for you to see, you might be able to see the shine in it, but it actually feels like a sand, and that is... Finnebear's texture paste. It's called white sand. It's actually kind of clear, but it does have a white sand in it. Um, so it comes out like a creamy, but it's very textured. And um, the way you're really going to notice this through a stencil or just putting it on with a palette knife in your background is when you paint it. So you can actually mix the paint right in, acrylic paint right in with these gels, or any of these, and then smear it on or paint it on or however you're going to put it on your background. Or afterwards, after it dries, you can spray over them, you can paint over them, you can color over them with 
um, your Neo colors and things like that. The last one I have on here is, and not the least, but it, it is the last one for this, is um, my favorite, which is Modeling Paste. And this just happens to be by Finnebear. This is my favorite brand of Modeling Paste. And it's an opaque matte Modeling Paste. It's so smooth and it's so easy to color. It does take a while to dry if you have it on really thick. And I will say that you're going to want to let it dry on its own because you can get some bubbling if you use a heat use a heat gun you might want the bubbling but if you don't if you want it smooth just let it dry on its own and that could take a while a few hours or more depending on how thick you put it on um, this is really thin so it didn't take that long um, but there is one more to mention and that is this distress texture paste crackle and this one I did want to demonstrate I just forgot and so I didn't add it but it does it looks quite like let me open this if you look on the inside, quite like gesso, right? Um, and But when it dries, it magically cracks and it crumbles and it's really, really fun. Now this particular brand, and I love Tim Holtz, I love them, you know I do, I love the Ranger brand, um, but this, is this Tim Holtz? Yeah, I think it is, right? The Ranger Crackle, yeah, this is Tim Holtz. Um, it does kind of cr crumble off the page if you use too much or if you dry it with heat gun. So you got to be careful because it will do some crumbling, but it's it's great. And if you seal it with a if you paint over it with acrylics, you're good. But if you just leave it um and you put heat on it or anything like that, you might expect some crumbling coming off, but nothing. I'm not dissuading you from getting it. I actually use this the most out of any of my paste. So, definitely a great product. Um and if you want to see just how we would color these. Let's see how we are on time here, guys. Okay, yeah, let's just grab some color and just see how, how we would color these. Um, so, gosh, I feel like I have shit. Here I go, I'm about to freak out over the light. You know how I am. I'm seeing all the shadows on here, so I'm hoping, I kind of adjusted it, but I don't know, I can't see anything. So, hopefully, I'm hoping this is good. If not, I do apologize. <laughs> okay, so I would just, you know, this is just um, a Neo 2 a Neo color too. Um, and so it's water soluble and I have some water over here and you can just take your Neos and you can go around edges like this and just go right on in here. And what's cool about using stencils is you can just add the water. I'm actually just going to get a water, well I guess I'll get this. And you can just, you know, add your water and kind of let it, or just add it with a squirt bottle and just kind of let it run down and then I'll just you know get in there and yeah and it just colors it and it looks really cool now of course you know when you use your your stuff like Neos and everything there you can see through them they're not opaque so if you want some kind of opaque coloring on them and you don't want your paste to remain white you're going to want to use an acrylic for that and so I'll show you that let me grab a baby light right quick. there we go kind of contain my mess here and yeah so this is like a real cheap brand of paint I have so, so many paints I have this folk art is probably my favorite but I wanted to get something cheap that you know is 50 cents a bottle so if you're wanting to try this stuff on your for the first time you don't have to buy more expensive stuff you can use cheap stuff and so I like to when I'm painting stuff like the paste I like to go in dry brushing um, you don't have to but I, that's just how I like to do it so um, this is the um, the sand over here or the pumice gel over here and so we'll just run some of that cheap paint on top and I will show you and that way um, with the acrylic it cover you know it has the best coverage so there you go and you can keep on layering it on and everything but that's how you get some coverage and I would have to use more paint to cover all of it but can you see that okay um, hopefully <laughs> I'm waiting for an answer. <laughs> um, hopefully you can see that okay. So yeah, so it, it does cover it good and in person it looks a lot better. It's just kind of my messy example. I'm kind of a messy girl. <laughs> and then the same uh, with the gel. Now this is a gel. Even though it's a texture paste, it is a gel in the background. So you're not going to get, um, you're going to still have that gel look. You know what I'm saying? So you're still going to be able to, it's going to be semi like translucent. You know what I mean? It's going to be covered, but it's still going to have that kind of translucent 
type look to it, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> so even though you're using acrylics, it still has that, that feel, that shiny feel. And so there you go. So there. So those are just some examples of how it would look if you colored it. And of course you can do layers of different colors and different, you know, these aren't the only two mediums you can use. There's so many things you can use. Um, you know, ink tents is great. Sprays are my favorite. I love oxide sprays. Um, they're super fun. So there we go. I don't usually keep my brushes in water. So even though these are my junky brushes, or not junky, but my craft brushes like to keep my stuff nice okay so yeah so that covers that and then let me show you a couple examples here while I have these out so this is some texture paper oh, let me see here we go this one I've shown all these before so you've probably seen them I won't spend a long time on them this is a real busy piece like a busy bee <laughs> um, piece um, but you can see let me just hold up in the background here I used this is Tim Holtz regular texture paste not the crackle if you can kind of see the little honeycombs I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it and they are you know from all right here and over here and I just colored them with sprays just oxide sprays and then right here, this again is texture paste, and I covered that with sprays as well. Um, they're all with Tim Holtz sprays. So anywhere you see the 3D, you know, little mini honeycombs and the bigger honeycombs, and there's some up here, that's all Tim Holtz texture paste, which is kind of his regular texture paste, um, the opaque type, because he does have his translucent. The opaque one is just like modeling paste that I shared with you. So I do love that. And that's just one way. And then you can also see, this is a good example for a background. Um, I just did swipes of dry brushed gesso in the background, if you can see that. And what you might not notice is underneath the gesso, I did do an acrylic pour on this, that's what I went over. But there's also tissue paper I don't know if you can see like the music notes back there maybe not but there's tissue paper under there um, and all kinds of stuff so um, well, right here where all these words are these this is um, like the dictionary definitions that's all tissue paper so I it's layers you know and then there's stamping so that adds interest you just do layers so it's really really fun so if you're new you can start off with a painting or just paint it a, a color or nothing at all and you can use texture paste and then when that dries or before that you can use decoupaging you can add napkins um, with glue and then when that dries you add your texture paste and then you add your um, paints or your um, sprays and things like that so you just want to layer it up and there's so many videos on it but I just wanted to give some cool examples um, another one well, let's show you, this one has some different paints. Here's some crackle paste. Do I have crackle paste? Yeah. Oh no, that's not crackle paste. I, I brought this over because I thought it was crackle paste, but now that I'm looking at it, there is modeling paste under here. So if you can see, this is an oil paint painting. It's an oil paint pour. Isn't that cool? So this is a paint pour. It's really shiny because it's oil paints, but done with the PBO paints. They're so cool. <laughs> like really awesome. And I forget what they're called. I, I, I will link them below because they were super fun to play with. And you can just see all the different types of paints that are on here. This I thought was crackle paste, but it's actually the paint itself. So we won't get into that because I can go on about that. Maybe I'll do a video on these paints because they're super fun. But anyways, uh, back here uh, under this purple, that's uh, all the texture that you see back there is all regular paste through a stencil and I just did the pour on top and let's move right into the next segment which is adding pieces of metal or pieces of wood or pieces of jewelry or toys plastic now when you do start doing stuff like this depending on if it's a uh, um, a canvas or what it starts to become assemblage art if you like really load these things on and paint over them on a canvas. It's called assemblage art and that is one of my favorite things to do. And so I've done that here with this piece and this was a really fun background to do. So this was one of the first pieces I've ever done so 
yeah, you could tell, but um, it still was really fun. And so I used all metal pieces. You can see the bobbin, mini fork. Underneath the fork, you can see corrugated cardboard. And that's a really fun um, texture to add to your backgrounds. The cross is a wooden piece. All of these are metal. That's wood. Um, yeah, just all metal. And then, you know, we have feathers shaped as wings. And then I did add string. And I wasn't going to give this to anybody or show anybody. I didn't plan on it when I made it. I made it a long, long time ago before my channel. Um, and so, you know, I left the back like this. And so this is just string. So that's another background texture that string adds. And then you can paint on it. But you can bring this to a journal. Of course, not this crazy because you wouldn't be able to close it and all of that. But you can add elements like this, little cogs. You can add some cogs to your journal page background if you wanted. The string, you could glue that onto your journal page. Yeah, so some of these pieces, like the feathers, you can paint over those. You can totally add some of these pieces to a smaller um, piece like a journal. And so, yeah, very useful. Buttons are great. <laughs> Okay, and, oh, and I did that on this too. The flowers, I'm sure you noticed. Those are, you know, those are, I can't think of the word right now. Plastic, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so the flowers are definitely in that category. And then, let's, okay, let's get to the more unique stuff that I think is cool. Oh, you know what? I have one sitting right here. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm a little ahead of myself. Um, this. Now this looks kind of silly sitting here like this, but just my whole point in showing you this particular piece is just to look around your house. This is what I wanted to say for this. Now this might not look like anything right here, but you can shape this. This is a pipe cleaner and you can shape this into whatever you want. So imagine taking a whole bunch of pipe cleaners, which you can get a whole pack of them for a dollar or 88 cents I think they are at Hobby Lobby something like that or the dollar store um, and imagine taking a bunch of these and shaping them into squiggly circles and gluing them down and then painting over them that would be such a cool background um, I just think that's really cool and I don't know what you'd be able to do on top of that you could paint but I mean you certainly couldn't write on it or anything like that but most of these things are 3d that I'm telling you about so they're they're kind of like just you know, your mixed media art pieces in themselves. Um, and I'm just talking about like journaling. You could take these and outline the outside of a, a journal page if you wanted to and paint over it, but it would add, you know, a lot of texture. So it would be thick to close. But anyways, I wanted to mention that one, just thought it was different. But um, I have I have some really cool ones I wanted to share right after this one. Let's do this one first. So these are other more well-known ways to add texture and some of my favorites and so I love using laces on backgrounds and I did add some gesso on top just so you could see if you're if you've never done that before um, what it looks like with the gesso and um, the bottom is unpainted so so no gesso but yeah so it just adds a really nice texture and then you can come in with your sprays again you can come in with your neo colors and you can just go around if you want it go on top just you know go in and then spray and color and you just get really interesting effects you can also go in let's see what that looks like I don't know I didn't try it out yet <laughs> So you can do that. Let's go with our paintbrush. See, you can color it. That's just a neo color. So you can definitely come in. And I'm just obviously loosely doing this. That's a neo color. So you get, you know, part coverage. You're, you're still going to be able to see some of the, the white. But I would say that actually colored it pretty good. Wouldn't you? <laughs> For a neo color? That's pretty cool. Um, but look how cool that is. And then you could also come in with um, these. Um, ink tents is great, a great price, one of my favorites, but I am, it's actually pretty unexplored for me, but I can say it's one of my favorites just from what I've tried. I've absolutely loved it and I need to get more into them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get into this color right here and just see what it looks like on top of the gesso. Oh, and you can see a lot of the white. So yeah, 
So there you go. That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, that looks really cool. You can see the textures and the fibers in this one. I'm going to hold it up. And then I'm going to do it down here where there's no gesso. Let's do that to see if it's any different. Like, do you have to gesso it first? Or can you just come in? Oh yeah, you can just come in. You don't have to have gesso for that. I mean, I already knew that you didn't have to, but oh, I used way too much water. Oops. Um, but yeah, this is a different... You get a, a darker kind of a darker effect when you don't use the gesso for at least for this product. I actually like it. I I don't know. I like it both ways. So I would you could use gesso in half and <laughs> leave some of it without gesso to get different tech um different um colors, you know, deeper colors and lighter colors and um yeah, it's fun. Really, really fun. So let's, let's bring that up. See, you can see the textures. I hope you can, that picks up. You can see the texture, uh, or the fiber, sorry, um, when you use the gesso. It kind of brings out the individual fibers, and I don't know if it's picking that up or not. But then do you see down here where there was no gesso? It's it's a lighter blue up here. Down there, it's, it looks really cool and dark. So that is a really cool, you know really cool thing to do using our laces on backgrounds and painting over it and of course you can use acrylic and again we'll come in with this acrylic oh of course I just bombarded it didn't I let me get this paint out of my brush <laughs> all right and we'll come in with that and of course you're going to get a more opaque coverage I'm having so many problems with my hands lately. It's been so depressing that when I hold a brush, I can barely, I can barely feel my my finger. So I'm kind of just telling my arm where to move. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so silly. But anyways, you wouldn't go that thick with it. I just drew, like globbed it on there, and and I'm going on the page as well, just kind of to show you, you know, if you were to paint your paper as well next to it, you know. So you get the point. So there you go. So that's the texture you would get with that acrylic. Very cool. So those are just a few examples of using lace as a texture. One thing that's new that I just started up, um, using are these. Um, actually just today. <laughs> and I wanted to leave a link below for this little guy because I just got him today from Amazon. He came um, and he was only like two bucks and it's very heavy. This is uh, wax um, stamps. I just forgot what they're called. <laughs> um, they have a name and I just I just went blank. I'm sorry. Um, so anyways, these are what maybe they're called wax stamps. I can't remember but seals I guess. Wax seals? Yeah. And um, so these are wax seals, and then you have your wax. Where did I put that? Here it is. And I only have a few different waxes. I have like gold, silver, white, and um, red here. And you just heat it up, and it melts. Now there's different types. I'm sure you guys know about the different waxes. You can melt them in a little like bowl with a candle under it there's like a little contraption and then you can pour it in a spoon and or pour you know heat the spoon up and pour it out I don't mess with all that I just take um I had to dig for a lighter it took me like an hour to find one <laughs> in the house I'm like I know I have one for candles around here somewhere but I found one today and I just took it and melted um you know just melted it and what I did instead of doing it right on the on the page is I just did some on some regular cardstock scraps that I had just so I could see what they look like and then I fussy cut them out so behind is just a little piece of paper from fussy cutting it scrap paper that was actually about to be in the garbage and that way I can glue this down because it's got paper on it I can glue it down into my journal page um, and so yeah and I got some mixed colors and it, they're also mixed sizes so these ones I, I've had for a long time and never used them um, and you could see the size difference um, these, this one has an M on it. It's very tiny and adorable. And this is, and then I have one with hearts. And that's what that looks like. <laughs> Super cute and small and dainty. So pay attention to the sizes if you're new at getting these, because there's different size stamps. And this one, I'm gonna leave the link below. 
like I said, I just got it and it was only like $2 and some change and it's very heavy duty and really good. It just looks like good quality for as cheap as it was, but I wanted the plain stamp because I didn't have that. Everything I have is engraved with letters or hearts and stuff like that and I wanted to try this one. Now, they don't have to come out this big. I dumped out you know tons of wax on there and this one came out kind of, I love these though I love the big ones um, I'll hold those up for you they look so cool and um, so that's with a lot of wax and then this one has a ton of wax and it would have been perfect um, but you can see this little bubble right there that's what happens if you get water onto wax before it's fully dry <clears throat> Um, I couldn't get my candle to stop burning and I didn't have water in here so I sprayed it and I didn't realize I got water on this but anyways that's neither here nor there this little piece right here is a piece of paper ephemera just cut out digital a little digital stamp and I just put it in there before I stamped and when you stamp it whatever you put in there will stick and you can use leaves and flowers uh, dried leaves, dried flowers, you can use pieces of paper, you can use stamps, you can use whatever and um, whatever you press in there is going to stick, you know, and it's very cool. I still like this even though it's got the bubble and it's all misshapen. I think that's a really cool piece of um, texture to add to your page or interest, you know. Not all of these are just background, um, you know, paint over type textures, although you could glue this on and paint over it and it would be an interesting shape. You know, you could get circles, misshapen circles out of this. So yeah, you don't have to put it on as a seal on your on your um, piece. You could just add it, a bunch of circles, and then paint over it and then that would be a really cool textured background. But this is what this uh, plain stamp would look like if you just used a little bit of wax. That's probably how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> and um, But this was done with the same stamp. So I wanted to show you that they're not all this monstrous big. So I'll leave the link below. And I think I got number one, if I'm not mistaken. But I think there's like 13 or more to look through. Maybe even more, I don't know. Um, but it was just a really good deal. Um, and it came in just two days for a couple of bucks. So I was very happy with that purchase. Because these suckers can be expensive. They, they're like $10 or more a piece. So yeah, uh, that's a really good deal. Um, okay, so, oh, you know what, I forgot to show you these, so moving along, I don't even know what number we're on at this point, I think I was going to name this top 10, but I don't know how many I have here, I still will probably name it that, so we're almost at 40 minutes, I'm going to go a little faster, but, and we're going to get to the really last two are, are my favorite, so, um, so these right here are ways to get textured backgrounds, of course, and this is with household stuff or maybe stuff that's more accessible. Now we have some gauze, um, here, which is cheesecloth as well, so you might have some gauze in the cabinet for boo-boos, <laughs> or you might have some cheesecloth, which is what I use. I love cheesecloth, um, and you can use colored cheesecloth, or you can use white and paint it. Now this was already colored because I dyed cheesecloth myself and so I had some you know like this red color but of course I this dye that I used was actually not dye at all it was Tim Holtz spray so to all Tim Holtz products are water uh, you can use water on them so they you know will disperse so just know that if you use something that's dyed with obviously that's an obvious thing to say um, if you dye something that is with um, water paints or water sprays it's going to come off into the whatever you're using water water brush or whatever so or, or gesso excuse me I can't get myself together so yeah you can use these um, or you can use the white and then spray it which looks really cool to do that let's spray that <laughs> and I'm just going to grab whatever color I have here what do I have let's see let's see if this is cool yeah. And then right next to where I'm shaking this, right next to here, this is just a, um, a napkin or a paper towel. And I wanted to show you how I apply those. Now, it's when you have a napkin or paper towel that you want to add as a background, I just use my glue and I like to use a waterproof glue like um, Fabri-Tac because that way when I go, it makes it nice and hard. And then when I go over it with gesso or when I go over it with paint or sprays, um, it doesn't get all crumbly and and like disintegrate okay so I use a nice glue that's gonna make it nice and, and durable kind of and then I use plastic wrap now this is just a wrapper from uh, my forest girl coloring book 
I took it right out of the garbage because I didn't have any plastic wrap or at least I didn't want to go look for it. So um, I just put the glue on, I set my napkin down, and then I took the plastic wrap and I kind of just crinkled it around like this. That way you're not getting glue on your fingers and also it helps to add like divots and hills. And the same with this piece down here which, which is a dryer sheet actually. So dryer sheets add excellent texture. So that's the same, I did the same technique with all of them. Whenever I glue down my laces as well that I just showed you, I always use a piece of um, plastic wrap and I glue the lace down and I use the plastic wrap to rub it on and that way all that excess glue that's coming through the holes is on the plastic wrap and not all over my fingers and not sticky all over the place. So it's just a really cool technique. And um, so this is what it would look like if you used it colored already. And then if you wanted to use some sprays here, um, you would just come in and, and give a little spray. Let's use a couple colors just for the effect here. This is a spray stain. This is an oxide spray um, in peacock feathers. And then we have uh, seedless preserves here. You can just add different colors. That's the napkin, or that's the paper towel. And then we have the dryer sheet over here. And then you could come in with even some, oh, let's see, oh, some paints. This is one of my, my new ones here. This is um, Color Shift acrylic paint. And so, yeah, you, I mean, I'm sure you don't have to do this, but you could, oh my gosh, and I dump it all out. <laughs> but you can come in with, um, with acrylic paint as well and paint over those just the same. Of course, I didn't mean to, again, I always dump too much on, but I didn't want to fuss with that lid because it's new <laughs> and I didn't take the lid off. But you can see here, um, when you use the sprays, you can see the white. I'll hold it up in a second. You know, you can see like the two-toned, like the white from it. And when you use acrylics, I don't know. I just wanted to see what would happen. If I would still see the white or if it... Oh, this is a color shift paint, duh. So it's not super opaque. So you are going to see some of that white, which is fine. So, of course, if you use a matte paint, you're going to have full coverage. So, but I think you get the point. I like, again, I like to dry brush mostly when I do stuff like this, but... Um, and this is, you know, this is all just very loose. Of course, you would reel it in for your project, but look how cool it looks when you add your paints and your sprays on there. Look at that. That's just a paper towel, and look at that texture. It looks like gesso. It looks like, it looks like you use gesso and, um, paste, you know, and it's just a paper towel. How cool is that? Now, I do recommend adding gesso over this. Um, if you're using a paper towel to seal it in. So even if you glue, glue it down, I would add some gesso over the paper towel just because you don't want, like I said, the crumbliness and all that. Um, so, And also it will help your paints to go on that much better. Okay? And help it to stay on. So that's just different ways right there to get textures, and they're all different too. You can get like the more, if you use less cheesecloth, you can get that thin look, you know, depends on how much you use, but yeah, they're all very different. And let's see, are we done with all that stuff? Okay, so the last couple are, like I said, some of my favorites. I feel like I'm missing one, but I'm sure I shared enough, so, um, uh, so yeah, let's go right into the last two, and that is going to be using, oh, you know what, oh my gosh, of course, leave it to me. Uh, one more really quick before I show you the last two. <laughs> these are different papers, and these, I use these the most. Now, I think this is a rice paper, if I'm not mistaken, and this right here is called, I, know, I don't know how to say it, it's Unru, or it's U-N-R-U, I think. Unru paper, I don't know, <laughs> but it's just a, um, a handmade paper with fibers in it. Both of them are, and different, you know, whatever these are, I don't know, plants of some sort, um, and they're just awesome. Now you can do this with onion skin, there's, um, what's the other paper I really love? Um, of course, I can't think, but there's papers with like grass in it and stuff like that, and I just can't think off the top of my head, but rice paper is one of my favorites, I have a lot of that over there, but these specialty papers, you can get these at Blix now, and, and I think they might even sell some at Joann's now on a big rack, 
handmade papers. I know they do, but I don't, I don't know. But these textured ones you can get online. Um, and I, I usually get them from fine art stores is where you can find them the most, like Blix or... Um, I already said Blix <laughs> or Arnie's if you have an Arnie's near you. So yeah, and just tear a piece off and then when you paint it, it's a beautiful texture because you have all these beautiful fibers in there. And the same with this kind of stuff. Now this is thinner, but it still adds a lot of um, really unique flavor to your page. So maybe not so much texture. Depends on, this might not have been the best example because this isn't really... The, the stuff inside isn't, um, these little pieces are not like really 3D, but there is um, handmade paper with like pieces of grass and stuff inside. and Like mulberry paper, that was what I was trying to say. Mulberry paper has a lot of texture, rice paper has a lot of texture, and when you paint over it, that texture is enhanced, you know, just like everything else that I've shared. So t um, just regular paper and just regular old copy paper. You can cut out pieces, use your um, die cutting machines and cut out different shapes. Or if you don't have a die cutting machine, because I don't, you can hand cut whatever you want out and just stack up different pieces of paper just like this. Um, these are tickets and you can stack up tickets and or what are um, papers and different you know, imagine this was bigger and you just did a bunch of different shapes and then you can paint it, ink it, stamp it, and that already adds so much interest to your background. And you can go right over that with beeswax if you want. That's the next one and one of my favorites. Oh, and I totally forgot to heat up my, my um, guns here. So, yeah... So while we're doing that, I'll teach you, I'll show you one more, just so that these can get heated, because the last two, I, I need the heat. <laughs> and I really hate this little heat gun, but I gotta work with it here. So let's see if I can, let me just plug this iron, the other iron in real quick. Sorry guys, I didn't have this one plugged in, but this is going to be worth showing you, because I want to show you Tyvek. And you might have seen the Tyvek heated up. But I want to show you because it's really fun and really awesome. And I have only done it once a very long time ago. So I actually kind of wanted to play with it again. And then we'll be all done. So the first one, let's see what I can do here. I'm not sure that I remember how high my iron has to be. I'm assuming my iron has to be on dry for the Tyvek situation. So I'm going to put it on medium on dry. Um, and I have my crafting iron. It's a regular iron, but I use this for, for the Tyvek one. And I'm going to let that heat up just for a second. So this is a little crafty iron here. And what I use this for is um, a background like this is to do like an encaustic background, which I have done a video on that before. Um, if you would like to see it, I can link it below. And I actually tell you all about encaustic on that video, which is kind of cool. Um, where it came from and how it originated, I think and all that stuff, but this is beeswax, just little beeswax pellets, 100% um, beeswax. And say this is our background, we did our papers, we did our inking and stamping. And then we can just come in with our little beeswax pellets, and you don't need a ton. Um, I don't know if you can use just regular wax, like candle wax, I mean I'm assuming a wax is a wax. I love beeswax because I love the color that it gives, the yellow. There's white too I think, but I love this yellow color, but the main reason I love it, first of all, I love encaustic. It looks so cool. It looks very vintage and, and different. But I, I really love the smell. It is so glorious. If you've never heated up beeswax with a craft iron. Now, I use this little tiny one. It is tiny. It's kind of a pain. But you don't want anything with holes in it, obviously. That would be dangerous. <laughs> um, you don't want to get wax up in your iron. So if they have ones that are a little bigger than this. Ooh, that's smoking. That looks pretty hot. Let's just do that. Okay, so let me just heat this up a little bit. Let's see. Oops. Let's see what we got here. Oh, of course, I used a, um, I used the Tim Holtz on here. Um, what am I trying to say? Distress. Uh, why can't I say this? This oxide. I'm sorry, guys. It's late, and so it might smear a little bit, but I'm cool with that. And I don't know how much you're gonna, it's going to pick up on camera using the wax. But it really does give a really cool encaustic look. Which encaustic is just painting with wax. 
<laughs> very self-explanatory. Um, but it's actually usually done on, on wood. Um, but you can do it just like this. This is like faux encaustic, I guess you'd say. This isn't, I guess, the real deal encaustic. But. So yeah, it's, it smells so good and it looks really cool when it's done. Um, and you can just sit and work on it and work on it. I love just going over it and going over it and evening it out and just smearing it around. It's just really relaxing, it's fun. And it smells amazing, again, for the 50th time. <laughs> but there you go. So if I was going to finish this, I would go put some more beeswax over here. And then I just take my iron and I wipe it off. I'm going to turn that off. And while it's a little bit hot, probably shouldn't do that, but I, I do kind of wipe it just because I want it to um, come off my iron. Let me unplug this real quick. <laughs> Excuse me. That was hard. <laughs> okay, so that was the encaustic, and let me just show you up close if you can see. The wax dries, it looks a little cloudy, and it just, I don't know if it really looks any different to you, but in person it looks so cool. And if you do it on just regular paper, but it's not really about just regular paper, it's about a background. Um, in person this looks so different. It looks like I have a coating of something on top and it looks like it's cloudy and just really, really cool. It looks like it's sealed up. I love it. Um, but if you use encaustic on just like a regular piece of paper and you keep going over it and going over it, like it's about to do it to this too, it makes it see-through. So it, it adds like, it makes it look like vellum basically. So if I were to keep going over this with the wax, uh, more and more you can already kind of see my fingers behind it in person. It makes this like a vellum basically see how it's doing that and So yeah, so you can pretty much make vellum. How awesome is that? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so the last thing is the Tyvek and it's gonna, It looks like we're gonna make it an hour <laughs> My videos are never never gonna be shorter than an hour. I don't think I know people hate that, but it's just the way it is. So I have my big iron over here. Let's switch this. And what I have prepared is um, this. Now, this is Tyvek. And it, Tyvek is stuff that you... It's, it's a material that is usually used in, like, um, mailing packaging like this. Um, and it's, like, you can't tear it really easily. Its fibers are really close together like it's very strong okay and um so like mailing packages at the post office or Tyvek but you're not supposed to get them I can't condone that I used to do that but then I realized oh yeah that's illegal and all that so <laughs> I bought some online and um I got it on eBay so yeah it's kind of pricey um, all the places I found it, it was kind of pricey. And I had it in my cart, and I was like, I'm not buying that. Now, this was two years ago, by the way, a couple years ago. And um, then the, the seller offered me $5 off, and I got it for really cheap. So I still have a bunch left, because you can use Tyvek. Um, I need to get a move on here, but you can use Tyvek to strengthen your spines of your the spines of your journal. So if you're putting a front cover and a back cover on to your spine, connecting them, you can use Tyvek and glue it to all three and it will be a very strong connection. Is my is this smoking now? What's going on here? Okay. Oh. Alright. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? So so yeah, so it's just a strong paper. And so I have one prepared here. And it has paint on it. And I just did one coat. I wasn't trying to make it super beautiful, but I do love that color. Look at that. So this is that Color Shift acrylic paint. And this color is called Dragon Flash. This beautiful green color. And so what I'm going to do here is... And yes, this is going to have to... This does have to do with the background, and I'll show you in a second. Because after we make it, it's something that you can... You can use it for a million different things. But you can glue it. You can sew on it. Um, you can do all kinds of things and I could just imagine gluing this down. So I'm going to put this face down. Let's just get a move on and then I'll show you or I'll tell you what you can use it for. Now you have to kind of be careful from what I remember. <laughs> it's been a while since I've 
done this, and I don't think this is a super popular thing to do. I don't know. Um, maybe I was late to the game. I don't know. I have, I've only seen one person do it. So, um, But you're going to put it, the paint side down. You want to have a cover over it. So I have this Teflon piece here. Um, and you don't want to press it with the iron. You want to hover over it with the iron. And this could take just a second, but I promise you it'll be worth it. So I'm going to hover over it with the iron here. And it's going to kind of react. And I'm going to show you what that reaction looks like. Mm -hmm. So just give me a sec. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, if it works, I guess this is kind of an experiment. I've done it before. Um, it's just been a long time. So, uh, I probably should have done it beforehand, but I thought it would be cool to do it together. Let me turn this up a little bit. And hopefully I wasn't wrong, because I feel stupid, but just just let bear with me. <laughs> but anyways, I'll say real quick. Um, I think this would be really cool, and you'll see if it ends up working. I think it is. Um, that this would be really cool to do... A water scene background like for bubbles and stuff because they turn you you start getting these big bubbles and I'm like starting to wonder if maybe this craft this piece of Teflon is too oh no it's starting to work okay cool it's starting to work you guys it's just really slow so just give it another sec to kind of just go back and forth so it is a process, so we're learning that. I didn't remember that it took this long, but so you kind of have to have patience for this one. But I will start showing, there it goes. There. Once it starts going, you want to slow down and watch it because you don't want it to crumple up into a tiny ball or anything. So I'm about to show you. It starts to shrink up and bubble up and all sorts of cool stuff. So let me see if I just use the tip of it right there. I'll show you one more minute. Thank you for being patient with this. I'm sorry I wasn't super prepared, but you can always fast forward if you want. I totally get that. <laughs> so I feel so happy right now. I just want to tell you guys thank you so much for being here because I have to t I say that I, um, I know I've been really busy with the kids and that's why I haven't been filming, but also um, I've been going through depression and... I know a lot of you, we've talked through emails and stuff, a lot of you suffer with that on and off as well. And I haven't dealt with it in a very long time. Um, and so, but I do have the tools to deal with it and uh, and to do it in a healthy way. And it still sucks, but um, yeah, I'm getting through. And this just reminds me, all, I said that all because I wanted to say that art is something that just it really makes you happy. It really does. So if you're depressed and you're not touching your supplies because you're depressed and you don't want to do anything, make yourself like I just did because I was not in a good way today. Um, I can fake it for my family, sure, but sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But um, I wasn't in a good way. I wasn't feeling good. But I, I'm telling you what, right now, just doing this little video for an hour, I feel so much at peace. I feel like I'm where I belong and just showing you backgrounds and things like that. It's just really fun for me. So just get in there and use it. It gives me an excuse to use all these things I haven't used in so long. So I'm going to stop here. That's my little inspirational saying there, but I just want to encourage you and to tell you you're not alone also because I, I hate that alone feeling. And so if you're struggling... I encourage you to go create and also talk to somebody if you need to. Uh, my email is always open. I've said that before. If you need somebody to talk to you and you don't have somebody, um, you can trust me. And all right, here we go. That's all. <laughs> so with that being said, let's carefully peel this off. Now, I would do it for longer, but look at that. Look how cool that is. Oh my gosh. And you could see the glitter. I hope you guys can get that. From the paint, just, oh my gosh. Look how cool. 
that is. Now the last time I did this, it looks like a beautiful shape, doesn't it? The last time I did this, I got these big, just round circle bubbles. I didn't get this at all last time. I had these perfect circle bubbles, and I thought that would be so cool in a water background. You could glue this on to the page, and it's so sturdy. You can sew through it. You can glue it. You can do anything with this. You can do so much with it. Now, there is more you can do with this. Um, you can use a heat tool on it in the same manner. I don't know if I want to just because my kids are sleeping. But if you use a heat tool on it because it is that force of heat blowing on it, it actually starts bursting open a little and it adds, it turns into lace. So you can actually make lace out of this. Um, so... Um, yeah, so I'm not going to do that, but you can do that. And I might even add a little more to this and, and be on my way. So I'm going to say goodbye to you guys as I play with my Tyvek. I hope that last one was really fun for you. Um, I, who knows, you guys might all know about that, and I just felt like it was so unique. <laughs> But um, I sure am having fun. So I hope that these were useful and fun. Tell me which one you like the best or if you, if you are new. This was kind of geared towards newbies. And if you are interested in doing this kind of stuff, which one you would love to try uh, first. Or if you already do this stuff, let me know what your favorite technique for a background or texture is. Um, and thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I feel so blessed to have you in my life. And again, I appreciate everybody who's supporting me in my little art sale and who is just here today spending an hour with me or even just a few minutes checking out different parts of the video. I am grateful either way. I want to tell you guys to have a great knife. Knife? Have a great knife. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't decide what I was going to say. Have, have a great night, day, wherever you are. And um, be kind to one another. Um, stay creative and stay yourself. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.